Five people died, including four children, after two boats carrying dozens of migrants sank in the Aegean Sea. Ukrainian forces advance in Zaporizhia region, while Russia reports heavy fighting in Donetsk. At least five people have drowned after two boats carrying dozens of migrants sank in the Aegean Sea. The deceased include four children and a woman. The Greek Coast Guard was able to rescue 18 survivors from the first vessel and transported them to the port of Mytilene on the island of Lesbos. Authorities say the boat in distress was located three nautical miles inside Turkey's territorial waters. While Turkish officials were informed of the situation, they did not respond, prompting the Greeks to issue a rescue order. Athens says the country has seen an increase in migration flows due to summer weather. Over the weekend, the Coast Guard located and rescued 98 migrants in three different missions. According to UN figures, over 14,000 people have reached Greece by sea or land so far this year, equaling 10% of Mediterranean migrant crossings. Ukrainian forces are claiming important advances in their counteroffensive in the Zaporizhia region. The Ministry of Defense says the army has completely regained control over one of the key points at the center of recent heavy fighting, the village of Robotina. Zbrojne sily Ukrainy na pivni prodolžujú nastupalni dije. Pisla zvilnenia Robotino. Наші збройні сили рухаються південно-східніше цього населеного пункту і рухаються по напрямках Новоданилівка, Новопрокіпівка, Мала Токмачка, а Черетувати. Russia has reported fighting in Donetsk region near Bakhmut, where there's heavy artillery fire. No major destruction in Russia has been reported. In the Ukrainian city of Kriviri, nightly Russian missile strikes have destroyed two private houses. The Russian Air Defense Forces say they shot down an unmanned aerial vehicle flying towards Moscow in the Leobarsky area of the city. There were no casualties or serious damage, but officials say local residents were frightened by the attack. The European Union must be ready to enlarge by 2030. That's what the President of the EU Council said in Slovenia where he outlined his vision for the bloc to reflect the profound geopolitical shift following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Finally, enlargement is no longer a dream. It's time to move forward. There is still a lot of work to do. It will be difficult. It will be complex, sometimes painful for the future member states and for the EU. But... Let's be clear, if we want to be credible, I believe, we must talk about timing. After Russia's illegal invasion in 2022, the EU gave Ukraine, Moldova and Bosnia-Herzegovina candidate status. Engagement was also stepped up with other Western Balkan countries, Montenegro, Serbia, North Macedonia and Albania, who also are official candidates, and Georgia's aspirations are also being taken seriously. The French president, Emmanuel Macron, on Monday said that the EU needs to reform itself first if it wants to integrate new nations and has to build consensus with more than 30 member countries, which is expected to be a difficult process. Experts also agree that the momentum is there, but the accession model has to change so that the functioning of the EU itself is preserved. The enlargement of the European Union, of course, risks um, bringing uh, at the table more veto-wielding member states and thus slowing down the, uh, the process of uh, seeking consensus on knotty issues. Um, so unless decision making is not uh, reformed, qualified majority voting streamlined, uh, the problems of an enlarged union and its smooth functioning uh, risk only aggravating at that stage. And that will in particular be so if uh, indeed, uh, you know, issues of rule of law, respect for democracy are not well settled uh, in these new member states. Both Ukraine and Moldova were granted candidate status in June and several voices are calling for the EU to open accession talks by December.
Just one year after prices broke all records, the energy crisis in Europe seems to be over, at least for now. Monthly household bills that ran to hundreds of euros are over for the time being, as prices have now dropped to pre-Ukraine war levels. Experts say that while there will be some ups and downs, customers should now have a little more breathing space. The volatility, I mean, uh, is always in the order of uh, 5, 10, 20 percent fluctuation. Is nothing as dramatic as we have seen and we are used to now see on the market. We need to remember that the fundamentals are also pretty encouraging when it comes, for example, with the gas storage. Gas storage in Europe is, is now full by more than 90 percent, and the demand for gas in Europe remains reduced in the order of 20 percent vis-à-vis the pre-crisis level. A year ago, gas prices marked their record high, reaching 300 euros per megawatt hour, while gas storage facilities were at 79 percent. This August, the situation is much better, with prices at 34 euros per megawatt hour and storage facilities almost full. And that should allow governments to change course. So while last year governments have uh, jumped into this field by subsidizing energy bills for all, it is now very important not to do that anymore because we are not in the middle of a crisis, but to be very selective and provide targeted support to the most vulnerable in society. Surprises can't be ruled out this coming winter, but right now observers expect the situation to get better as the EU deepens its energy transition and moves away from its dependency on Russian gas. France has banned the buy a dress from schools, saying it contravenes the country's strict policy to outlaw any conspicuous religious symbols in keeping with the French notion of a secular state. The decision announced by Education Minister Gabriel Attal has divided opinion. Inabaya is a robe for the chaleur. Point. C'est c'est les gens qui veulent transformer ça en une habille religieuse, mais ce n'est pas du tout une habille religieuse, vraiment. Par exemple, au pays, moi, je portais même pas d'abaya. C'est ici, genre, quand c'est l'été et qu'il fait chaud, j'en porte, c'est tout. There are those who reject the decision, those who approve of it, and those who think it is totally artificial. Puisque l'abaya là. Les Français ne l'interdisent pas dans la rue, euh, donc euh, c'est la liberté. Et bon, c'est à l'école, il y a des endroits peut-être où il faut l'interdire. Eh ben, moi, je suis pour. Voilà. Je suppose qu'il y a des sujets beaucoup plus importants et pertinents à traiter en ce moment, qui sont la détresse des hôpitaux, qu'ils soient psy ou autre, euh, l'école, euh, la vie quotidienne euh, pour les Français. Euh, voilà, il y, a, il y a beaucoup de choses qui, qui ne vont pas. According to the government, violations of secularism in schools increased by 120% in the last two years. Some say their use has gained ground thanks mainly to social networks. Another day, another court hearing for Donald Trump in Washington, D.C. District Judge Tanya Chutkan set a March the 4th trial date for the federal case, alleging he tried to overturn the 2020 election. The judge rejected the April 2026 date requested by Trump's lawyers, but set a date later than prosecuting special counsel Jack Smith had requested. Although he's facing four separate criminal cases, Donald Trump remains the front-runner for the 2024 Republican Party's presidential nomination. At home in Berlin, Simon Valfish is a professional British opera singer who took the decision to relocate to Germany with his family to overcome what he sees as the barriers to musicians brought about by Brexit. What used to be possible, get the call on the Friday, turn up on the Monday, start working in another EU country is now simply not possible. And that is infuriating and totally pointless. For British musicians, the cost of arranging visas, work permits and additional travel expenses has surged. Schengen visa limitations also restrict professionals to just 90 days in a 180-day period within the EU. The UK-EU trade agreement also lacks provisions for short-term travel for freelance creative professionals. What we've done is shot ourselves in the foot completely. 
Simon, who continues to perform across Europe, sees himself as one of the lucky ones, able to take advantage of his grandmother's German heritage. Anita Lasker-Walfisch, a German-born Jewish Auschwitz survivor, understands and supports her grandson's decision to take up German citizenship. He is a real European. And of course, these stupid Brexit people didn't give it thought for anything. As far as we are concerned, this is a total practical decision. German, English, European. Here at the Royal Albert Hall, the impact of Brexit on the music industry is reverberating. A recent survey by the Independent Society of Musicians found UK musicians are grappling with dwindling opportunities within the EU. Half of them report a decline in European-based opportunities since Brexit, and a quarter are left with no engagement at all inside the European Union. Sean Patel was too young to vote in the Brexit referendum. A baritone singer recently recruited to work at a Danish opera house, only for the opportunity to fall apart due to visa complications. They were completely honest. They said, because of Brexit, because of my situation as a British citizen, it's going to be more difficult for me to be able to come over. I was, I was their first choice, um, but unfortunately just couldn't get it in time. Sean is now going through the process of applying for an EU passport through his Irish heritage. But British musicians who don't have that option are now calling for a bespoke visa waiver agreement with the EU to be allowed to continue to play on in Europe. Luke Hanrahan, Euronews, London.